Welcome everyone. We invite you to be with us in our End Time Sanctuary Present Truth Ministry. A ministry that unravel the different truths in the sanctuary that most of us today uh, have little knowledge about it. Probably you ask the question, what is a present truth? Where to find the present truth? Why there is urgency in knowing the present truth? What is the connection of the present truth with our salvation? The end time sanctuary present truth ministry is a ministry that would help us really where to find the present truth. A simple answer to this questions is that where you find Jesus and what he is doing now is the present truth. So we understand that Jesus is in the sanctuary doing the last phase of his ministry. And when we follow Jesus, we know all other truths that are revealed in there. We have to look at because to follow Jesus, seemingly that it was only during the ministry on earth. Because while he was starting in his ministry in the Sea of Galilee, he saw brothers and relatives and he says, come and follow me. That is a call to discipleship. However, there is astounding call of Jesus after he died on the cross, after his ministry, he is ready to go back to heaven. Yet the book of John tells us in chapter 20 verse 19, says, follow me. I was wondering why, probably also you yourself, Jesus is going to heaven, but he said, follow me. At the beginning of his ministry, he said, follow me. There was a call. When I'm, I'm, I'm reading the scripture, there are five or six places where Jesus called his disciples. In the Sea of Galilee, in Jerusalem, in Bethbera, beyond Jordan, in Capernaum, in Nazareth. But after he composed his 12 disciples, Jesus no longer says, follow me, because he was on on his ministry. After three years and a half, and then he died on the cross, there is astounding text that says, follow me. What do you mean by Jesus, follow me? Since this ministry is on sanctuary, let us remember that Jesus, when he come on planet earth, is everything is followed according to God's plan before the eternity pass. When Jesus came on planet earth, he did not start his ministry in the sanctuary. He started on the camp. Because in the camp, that's where sinners live. And in the camp, he lived a pure, perfect life because that life that he lived should be accounted in our behalf because his life is a guarantee for those who believe in him later on. So after that, Jesus went to the cross. And after the cross, he was on the labor, labor part of the sanctuary. And after 40 days and 40 nights on planet Earth, he went to heaven and he entered in the holy place. And so here is following Jesus. So when we follow Jesus, we follow him. In his coming, we follow him in his birth, his ministry, his baptism, his work, and after three years, he was done. It's really a challenge to follow Jesus. In fact, Ellen White says in Confrontation, page 28, 
Satan also followed Christ. He followed Christ from infancy to childhood to manhood, investing means and ways to allure him from his allegiance to God, overcome him with his subtle temptations. In fact, if you read seriously the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, that verse, Satan is following him, when would be the seed is coming? Who will smash his head and bruise his heel? The history of the great controversy starting on Genesis 3.15. And so, when, when the devil was not able to prevent the coming of Jesus, in fact, Ellen White is saying that Satan must prevent Jesus from living a perfect life, from offering his life as a sacrifice to sin. So he had to follow Jesus 24-7. And this is what he said again and again. Jesus would have been killed had it not been for heavenly angels who attended him and guarded his life until the time when the case of the Jews as a nation should be decided. She wrote that in Review and Herald, October 12, 1897. Meaning to say, if we are followers of Jesus, we have a challenge of following him. But the devil also tried to follow Jesus of a different perspective and objective. For example, number one, he has four methods. I just mentioned four methods. Number one, to kill him before he could offer himself his life on the cross. So meaning to say, Satan was to follow Jesus to kill him. In fact, we understand that when he was born, Satan used Herod, King Herod, to destroy the baby. But God sent mighty angels to protect the young Messiah was, that was born in Bethlehem. And so when he grows up, did you remember in Matthew 8.24? Where the disciple crossed the, the Sea of Galilee and it was a peaceful sea. But suddenly there was a storm. If you read Ellen White in the Sarah of Ages, 333 to 336, Satan stirred the sea so that he wants to drown Jesus, including his disciples. Not only that, but the record also in Luke 4, 28 to 30, remember Jesus was visiting his hometown in Nazareth, where a mob trying to kill him, he was ready to be posed on the brow of the hill so that he would be killed. So here is the number one method. He followed Jesus, but he wants to kill him. Number two, method Satan used. He, he wants to infect Jesus with the virus of sin so that when Jesus will commit sin, he, can fulf he cannot fulfill his mission, but rather... When he sinned, then he needed a savior. He cannot be the savior of the world. And we know that what is followed again. Third method is to distract him from going to the cross by offering an easier life and get to his kingdom back. In fact, a lot of his disciples were used by Satan to distract. Jesus from the plan of dying on the cross. We find that in Matthew 4, verse 8, when Satan told him, I will give you all this world, and I have the right to whom I should give it. In Matthew 12, 17, I mean, 14, in fact, Peter was used by Satan. They said, you will not die, Lord. And then Jesus answered him and said, Get behind me, Satan. Meaning to say, Peter was used by the devil to distract Jesus on his plan. In fact, twice. They were on the Mount of Transfiguration where Moses and Elijah was seen. And then said, We will not go back to Jerusalem, Lord. 
we need we need to we need to stay here we'll make a house and as we have understood that it was not really the plan of Jesus to divert even to listen to the destruction of the devil and then we go to number four methods while he was few hours in Calvary Satan used discouragement and as we see the discouragement just imagine three years of ministry very few people love him in fact the leaders of the city of Jerusalem was against him he came to planet earth just to save his people and his nation but look what was the response and so the devil is really pushing him to the limit that he should be discouraged and in Gethsemane we find that Jesus overwhelmed not because of physical body but the spiritual side his soul because the sins of the whole world he is really upon his own being to carry it he was discouraged because when you be discouraged why die on the cross nobody love you your your disciple is leaving you you better go back to plan out to go back to heaven and stay there did you remember my brothers and sisters that this is really the big problem satan wants to follow jesus for thousands of years when jesus was born he followed jesus from infancy up to the cross what about us what about us let me repeat that matthew 14 19 he said follow me all of us are called to follow jesus and again he said in 9 matthew 9 verse 9 follow me he repeated that in mark 8 34 and luke 9 23 follow me in the bible when the word is repeated we need to get attention because that means emphasis when the word is repeated twice much more if it is thrice we need to follow so the expression of jesus in obeying his call is are follow me follow after me come to me abide with me and that is the essence of following Jesus come to me John is saying chapter 637 no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him John 644 even Jesus assert therefore I have said to you no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my father so that's our job once we believe on jesus let's continue following him we follow him here we follow him in our church we follow him in doing mission we follow him in everything we do and ellen white in the beautiful book of desire of ages page 86 she said it is our work to look to christ and to follow him now the course of discipleship is not easy why we need to follow there's a lot of challenges i remember when i was starting to learn the scripture starting to understand the bible i received bible studies my life was so difficult i have a lot of problem in my school i was third year at that time i was an officer of the uh, military training and then on sabbath i cannot report when i on monday <clears throat> in the afternoon our commandant would say habien why you have not reported last sabbath our training and i said sir it's against my conscience because i need to follow the lord and he told me 
in military, obey first before you complain. And he told me to give me 50 push-ups. You know, at the time, I was a little bit fat. I cannot carry even 25 or 30. But I did it myself. So, again, after that, he said, next Sabbath, you need to report or otherwise, we'll replace you. That's a challenge of discipleship. Again, following Monday, he called me into his office, Javier, again you were absent last Sabbath. I said, sir, I cannot violate my conscience because I love my Lord and I went worship on the Sabbath day. And then he said, okay, go and crawl. So I did crawl. And then he saw uh, the, the anthill, the, these red ants. And then he says, okay, give me a push up. So I push up there and saw all the ants was biting all over my body. I was crying. But yet, I stayed on because I love my Lord. So finally, since I was not reporting every Sabbath afternoon for training, he replaced me. I was demoted. I was happy. That's a cause of discipleship. Because Jesus says, when we follow him, whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. That's what Jesus is saying. So we need to understand. In fact, in, in, the, in John, he, he says, abide with me. Seven times. Lord, I will follow you. Follow me, verse 59. Lord, I will follow you, another one who says. And Jesus said, if you want to be perfect, get, okay, go and sell what you have and give to the poor. And you have a treasure in heaven and come and follow me. He told the rich young men. It's a challenge, really. Especially in our world today. Secularism, idolatry is overwhelming. Very difficult to follow. And not only that, we are still on planet Earth. I want to share with you what I have read from Ellen White, Great Controversy. I was amazed when I found the answer in Jan. 20 verse 19, follow me. Listen to what Ellen White said. She said, but they are the people of God, but the people of God to understand his work and to follow him by faith as he goes before God the Father. Wow. Meaning to say, to follow Jesus, we need to follow him, his movement, his action, even to heaven. Follow him by faith. In Greek Controversy 4, uh, 4, 27, paragraph 2, he says, By faith, the disciples followed his work in the sanctuary above. Here comes my brothers and sisters. Not only we follow here on planet Earth, but we need to follow by faith Jesus there on the sanctuary above. Third statement of Ellen White, following Christ by faith as he enters before God to perform his last work of mediation. Great Controversy, page 428. So following Jesus now, as I have understand the book of John, follow me. We need to follow Jesus, not only in the camp, on the altar, but we need to follow him in the first apartment, and then follow him on the second apartment because when we cannot follow Jesus in the holy place and the most holy place, we only follow him here on earth. We cannot follow him by faith in heaven. There is a big problem. Did you understand here in the picture of the sanctuary? We need to look at really Jesus in the way. Most of the preaching of most people is, is, okay, accept Jesus who died on the cross. Only we're up to the cross. Yes, that is good, but not good enough. Because Jesus tells us to follow him in the sanctuary. Where he is, 
working because that is called the praise in truth. Where Jesus is, what he is doing, that is the praise in truth. So, we need to look at beyond this world. Let's go up because that is what Jesus is saying. Number four statement of Ellen White. She said in the Great Controversy 3, 430, 340, It is those who by faith follow Jesus in the great work of atonement who receive benefits of his mediation in their behalf. Here, we need to follow Jesus because what he did on Calvary, we can get the benefits when we enter into the sanctuary. Where the sanctuary, the seven candlesticks, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, the bread which is the word of God, and we have understand that this part there is needed, the, the altar of incense, because these are where the property, where the, where, where the things in the sanctuary which benefits us. The prayer, the meditation, or we call that the incense. That is the prayer of the saints. So we get the benefits of Jesus' death on Calvary through when we follow him in the holy place. Fifth, the opening of the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary in 1844 as Christ entered there to perform the closing work of atonement. Those who by faith followed their great high priest as he entered upon his ministry in the most holy place beheld the ark of the testament they had come to understand the savior chains of ministration here we understand now when we follow jesus not only we follow his call in the church in the ministry but let us follow him going up into the holy place and the most holy place when we do that by faith we fulfill what Jesus says, come and follow me. Because Jesus, in his ascension, began his work as a high priest. We found that with Hebrews 9.24, where Paul says, For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the throne, but into heaven itself, now appear in the presence of God for us. And again, she said in the Great Controversy 420, the ministration of the priest throughout the year, the first apartment of the sanctuary within the bill which formed the door and separated the holy place of the outer court represent the work of ministration upon which Christ entered at his attention. It was the work of the priest of daily ministration to present before God the blood of sin offering, also the incense of prayer of Israel. Do you understand? Here is our benefit. When we follow Jesus in the most holy place, we get the ministration of what he did on Calvary. That's the benefit that we need to, to get. If you look at we follow, here is a picture of a sanctuary. If you can look at that. So we follow Jesus in the camp, in the outer court, in the holy place, in the most holy place. Meaning to say, as I said earlier, when we follow Jesus, not only on planet Earth, in our ministry, in our daily experience with him, let us follow him by faith into the holy place and the most holy place. When we follow that, there is a surety of our salvation. Why? Because in the first apartment, Christ is pleading his blood, his perfect sacrifice before the Father in our behalf, and present before him also the fragrance of his righteousness, his perfect life. According to Ellen White, Christ's disciples followed him in the sanctuary as he ascended. So we find that in 10 days, they were in the upper room. They followed Jesus, what is the activity of heaven. And after they followed Jesus, everything, their mind changes. No longer they look at what happened on earth because there is a security of our eternal salvation. So, it is important really to follow Jesus. We need to follow Jesus every day in our family, in our work, 
in our activities, in our mission. But let us go beyond by faith. Go to the sanctuary, the first and second apartment. Because we need to follow Jesus. Because the altar of sacrifice and the labor, that is the Messiah, the symbol of that is the cross and cleansing. In the holy place, we have the table of shoe braid, the candlestick, and the altar of incense. Meaning to say, the truth, the way, and the life. And in the most holy place, we find the ark where there is a judgment. Put it another way, the altar of sacrifice and the labor is a courtship because we repent and we baptize. In the holy place, the table of shewbread, bread, the candlestick, and the altar of incense is an engagement, Bible study, witnessing, and prayer. In the most holy place, there is now the marriage, the victory. That's the benefit when we get and follow Jesus by faith wherever he is. And so, we need to understand the challenge. Did you remember? Many of us have read in, in the book of Revelation that the 144,000 follow Jesus wherever he goes. That's the secret why they have won against the mark of the beast, his number, and in fact, because they follow Jesus by faith, they overcome the mark of the beast, his number, and to worship the beast. So we need to follow. Following Jesus is, is more than what we follow. We follow him repeatedly. Ellen White is saying in early writings, it was presented to me that the remnant followed Jesus in the most holy place and beheld the ark and the mercy seat and were captivated the glory. Jesus then raised the cover of the ark and lo, the table of shewbread, the Ten Commandments were written upon them. The question is, up to where did you follow Jesus? Many of us who follow Jesus just stoop down on planet Earth. Only on planet. But we need to raise our head and looking up, penetrate beyond the clouds, and we see, we follow Jesus by faith, we behold him. And the surety of our salvation is so clear when we follow Jesus up to that point. Let's follow him in the second apartment. Let's enter by faith. What I like that. We cannot go to heaven, but we can follow Jesus. We can enter heaven in the sanctuary, the holy place, and the most holy place through faith. Because faith is a gift to us by God that we can follow. Many times Ellen White says, as they by faith enter the most holy, divine Jesus. This is the challenge. When we follow Jesus by faith, we move our spiritual eyes and see Jesus where he is, and there is an assurance of salvation because we have followed him by faith. It is important. And so this is the meaning now of Revelation 14 verse 4. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. Are you following Jesus? Or are we only looking here, follow Jesus here on earth, rather than follow whenever He is? That's why we say the present truth. Where is Jesus? What He is doing? When we follow Him and we find Him through the eyes of faith, and we follow him by faith, sure, we are one of those who will, that is what John is saying, the ones who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. From the disciples of Christ to the last penitent believers, disciple of Jesus, to the third angel's messages of Revelation 14, our greatest challenge is to follow Jesus. Meaning to say, we follow here a microcosm on planet Earth, his calling. But we need to follow the macrocosm of his ministry in, the, in there in heaven in the most holy place. And when we do that, we get what God has provided us. 
Let me again repeat that. What are the benefits of Christ's atonement on the cross? Yes, because most of our preaching accept Jesus who died for you on the cross. But we need more beyond the cross. Let's go to the holy place, to the most holy place, because his life is perfect. He lived a perfect life. If I have to put it in an illustration, is this. Jesus lived a perfect life holy life because that life is like a currency deposited in heaven and can only be taken by the one who is repentant to come and follow him. The second benefit of his perfect death and sacrifice is that enough heavenly currencies deposited in our behalf when we come there is no sin that cannot be covered when we follow him there in the sanctuary above. So, let us not follow like the Jews. The Jews in their time, remember when Jesus hung on the cross, the rending of the bill of the temple showed that the Jewish sacrifice and ordinances no longer be received. The great sacrifice had been offered and had been accepted, and the Holy Spirit, which descended in the day of Pentecost, carry the minds of the disciples from earthly sanctuary to the heavenly where Jesus has entered by his own blood to shed upon his disciples the benefits of his atonement. Story of Redemption 386. So, if we cannot follow Jesus wherever he is, look what happened to the old Israel. But the Jews were left in total darkness. They lost all the light which they might have upon the plan of salvation and still trusted in their useless sacrifices and offering. The heavenly sanctuary had taken the place of the earthly, yet they had no knowledge of chains. Therefore, they could not get the benefit by the magician of Jesus Christ in the holy place. Story of Redemption, page 386-387. So we need really to follow Jesus. Following him. Yes, we do a lot of work. We serve him in the church, in our home, in the family, in every ministry. But let's also go by faith, the eyes of faith. Let's go to where Jesus is where, because that's the place we get the benefits. Let's follow. And I remember what Ellen White says. Those who follow Jesus and look at them, fix them. But those who try to remove their eyes away from Jesus, they were lost in darkness. We need to understand that because that is a gift to us, given to us, a heritage that we need to look at and meditate every day in the way how we serve the Lord. And so, here, we understand that as Jesus went to heaven, followers should follow. The problem sometimes is that we are too earthly centered. In fact, most of our lives, we have everything on planet Earth. We have so little about the heavenly kingdom. Why? Because we have not followed Jesus where he is doing magician in our behalf. And so, my brothers and sisters, let, let me end up with this challenge. Let us follow Jesus here on earth, faithfully. But let us follow him by faith in his kingdom to come, especially as he finishes his ministry in the heavenly sanctuary where our salvation is. Follow him because Hebrews 12 says, Look, continue to see me, follow me, because when we follow Jesus in the end, whenever our eyes, no matter what happened in the world, we have a security because there is only, there is only one thing that we need on earth, to follow where Jesus is, what he is doing in our behalf, and that's the surest way that when he comes, our salvation is eternally secured. This is my prayer.